thank you so much for uh, talking to me today. I really appreciate no, no you taking problem. the time out for this interview. Thanks for wanting to do it. Your videos are always top notch. Oh, well, I appreciate that. <laughs> I do my best, but uh, I definitely just, uh, I feel like a lot of people when they interview you, it's for a character or yeah, for something yeah. that's a little more um, to do with the story or something like that. But I really want to take a step back and look into everything you've done so far and just get a little bit uh, deeper glimpse into everything. All right. So first question is, what made you start dancing? Did you grow up with the grooves to move or did something inspire you? Uh, I don't think anything ever made me start dancing or I don't even, I don't even know if I ever thought about it. I'm trying to think because I know there was a point in my life where I didn't dance. I wasn't like, really? I like dancing. <laughs> like when I was little, maybe I goofed around or something, <laughs> but I never like danced or listened to music very much when I was little. I remember the only thing I ever really heard was uh, um, Simon and Garfunkel. So my dad liked them and the Beatles and Paul Simon, uh, sometimes Van Halen. Uh, my, my, my dad really likes the Beatles, so I hear stuff, hear stuff like that. But I never like listened to my own kind of music until I was a teenager, I think kind of like most people. But I still didn't dance. I listened to Beck a ton. Uh, I really liked Beck. But anyways, I, I think I started dancing around 20 years old. So uh, oh, wow. I remember the first time in places I started going dancing, like going out to go dancing was in Providence, Rhode Island with my brother Seth. And so my friends, my friend Brad, uh, and uh, we go to this place called Club Hell. It was just a club, but it's called Club Hell. They did a gothic night once a week, uh, but on Tuesday nights at Club Hell in Providence, uh, it was all like, you know, seamsters and hipsters that went, it was an eighties night. And we went every single week for like years. And I loved it. It was, I was obsessed with it. That's when I really started dancing. And that was in 2000 and two maybe 2001 2002 and then i moved to california in 2005 or six and ever since then i then would then then that group of friends from massachusetts and rhode island we all went well we're all from massachusetts but we went to rhode island to go dancing we all went to la and we continued going and we found 80s nights in la and started dancing so that's when i really started dancing and then i started dancing in videos i think when i made the first one which was a chip contest video there's a food brand called like, oh, food should taste good or something like that. I think it's called, that's like the name of the company. They had a contest where it's like, make your celebration touchdown football dance. And me and my friend Paul uh, were like, oh, let's just go to like a ton of locations and cut through the locations and I'll dance on locations. And we put like a day's effort into it and we won the contest. Every, all the other contestants were mad because they all had like webcams and they're just like sitting there doing this. And then they were like, these are professional people. And I was like, I'm just a guy with a camera and a friend. If we did, we're not professional. I mean, yeah, anyone could do what we did, honestly. So anyways, we did that touchdown dance video, which some people probably know about. And I used the Phantom NK song who did the music for Keith. Uh, and then I just started dancing from there. That was the first like dance dance video. Then I did maybe on yell and then Keith started dancing. And then all my other now dad dances, everyone dances. Cause I do, I do like dancing, but it came on probably around 20 years old. Uh, and I'm not a professional dancer. I've never been taught. I can't learn choreography. It's incredibly hard. I just kind of do the same things and I will never claim to be a dancer. <laughs> really? You, you don't do yeah. any choreography. It's, it all just kind of flows I out naturally. Up, I just 99% of the time, I just making stuff up as I'm going, but there are times where some videos I'll come up with a little piece of choreography where I'll be like, okay, I'll do this. Like in the video that I put up recently, the uh, Skrillex dance video, uh, that I made a little choreography with my friend Catherine, who is actually an Emmy award winning choreographer. A uh, choreographer, I think it's Emmys. I honestly don't know any of the awards, Oscars, Emmys. I don't know the difference. So, anyways, me and Catherine, she's a friend from mine from the Upright Citizens Brigade. We came up with this dance that a version. She comes up with really elaborate dances, and I'm like, ah, oh, let's tone it down, make it a lot more simple. I can't remember all that and do these things. So. Uh, what we saw in the Skrillex video was a combination of her and me making a dance that I could remember that I could then go out and do in all these locations. Because I do like to do some things where it's like, oh, I'm doing the same move in a couple locations so it cuts well. But there's also a major part of every dance video where I'm just kind of free, freestyling and doing stuff because I can't remember choreography for the life of me. It takes me about 24 hours to remember what a regular dancer could learn in like a couple minutes.
Well, that's that's really surprising to me. I kind of just figured you came out of the womb doing the no bones or something. <laughs> uh, no, no. I mean, I've always been physical and I've always thrown myself around. Me and my brothers would climb the roof and we we had a tree fort. My dad built us. It had a zip line through the trees. We had trap doors. We were wow. jumping and climbing and skateboarding and playing since I was like two years old. I've always been throwing myself around. So I've been physical. Uh, and I think that lent itself to later doing like the stunts and physical comedy, just kind of knowing how to like move. And, and I, since I'm so active, I think it kind of just was sort of a, a like a segue to doing physical stuff. What has been your favorite dance related project thus far? Okay, I, d I definitely know my favorite dance related project. I mean, I like all the dance videos and stuff I make, but the, I will say the Robin Schultz sugar video, which I don't know if you've seen it, but yes. a lot of people, it's the most viewed thing I've ever been in. I'm choosing this because it was such a fun day. It was two days, actually. It was a very fun two day shoot. Uh, it was because of my dance videos, I get asked to do music videos sometimes, and this was one of those cases. Flowrider also was very fun. Flowrider was myself and my manager, Andy, at the time, uh, filming that whole music video by ourselves through Miami, Florida for Flowrider. Uh, that was very fun, and I'm nostalgic for that trip because that was just a lot of fun, the two of us. I was offered to put that on my channel, and I said no because I wanted it to go on their official Flowrider music YouTube channel so that all these people would come to find me. Yeah. If I put on my channel, my audience would see it. It wouldn't get very many views, but then it got like 50 million views and we were like, crap, maybe we should have put on my channel because maybe <laughs> they would have promoted it just the same. And I would have, but I felt it didn't reflect. They asked me to make this music video. And then if I put up my channel, made me look like a fan of Flo Rida, like just making him a free video. I was like, no, this isn't what's happening here. You guys want to view from me. So you're putting on your channel. So it helps me because I don't want to, I'm not, I wouldn't have done this otherwise. Right. Anyway, that was fun. But then I did the Robin Schultz music video. Zach Stoltz, uh, the director, is a cool dude uh, who I have some mutual friends with. And we met when he they reached out and uh, we finally worked together on that. And it was very, very fun. He's a really cool dude. And it, I got to drive a police car down ro real roads, swerving, hanging out the window. And I had police driving in front and behind of me so no one could drive near me. And I could just go, I mean, I could have driven up on a curb, but I luckily I didn't, but it was amazing. And then there was also, uh, then they were also towing it. Uh, sometimes they, you do that. I've done that in a few commercials where they'll tow the car. And then there's a camera on the back of the truck that's towing it, filming you. And it looks like you're driving, but you're not. I did that. And then I got to dance all over just the, the car washing. It was just so much fun. Cause I just got to like, I was getting paid to do what I've been paying to make. Exactly, All these years, yeah. I spend thousands of dollars on my videos. I don't make any money off of them on YouTube. And finally, people are asking me to be in music videos because it's also like, oh, it's already, it's paying off. So I very much enjoy those days and those moments. And someone recognized me at the car wash that day. Some guys said, oh, I love your videos. You took a picture of me. I just felt really good those two days. So I will say the Robin Schultz sugar video. And it's the most viewed thing I've ever been in. It's got like, 500 million views or something or maybe yeah something like that's like half a billion all right speaking of dance something that drew me into your project dad feels aside from the incredibly deep story was the moves something about those floppy energy filled movements enchanted me and i honestly couldn't look away <laughs> i was kind of wondering if the moves were inspired by uh something you had seen or if you were trained into those moves uh i don't think that they were inspired by anything other than well okay i will say this I remember so like some of the like the hits like the no bones the sick cat uh and like what i did for like the dance on people uh youtube channel these are all things i was d doing for for uh like stand-up bits at the upright citizens brigade i'd write 10 minutes of material and i'd go and i'd do a character monologue at the upright citizens brigade um on friday nights it was a show i did i was a part of you know just do like characters and i would come up with these physical movements that I thought were funny looking. And a lot of them were for these completely separate bits about like one was like my, my Simmons DuPont character. He was substitute teaching uh, a science class as the, he's a gym teacher. And he's like, I don't know much about science, but I know about animals. I'll teach you about animals. And then he's like, this is a donkey. And he just acts like a, he just acts <laughs> like a donkey. It was the dumbest routine. But then he did the no bones originally was. And he said, then finally, the mystical amoeba. And then he just started flopping oh. around. And it was me doing, not many people know that. No, it's no. on YouTube somewhere, um, but maybe it's not there anymore. So Simmons doing the amoeba was the no bones, huh. but I also had done the no bones earlier in a video uh, 
long time ago where I was saving someone from railroad tracks and it was just how he untied the rope really fast. Um, so it's just weird physical movements for videos and other reasons. And then I go, oh, that's a funny move. I'll work it into a dance here because it's funny and it kind of goes with the music. So yeah, it was, it was just to be straight. There were just to be strange dances. And then if you work them in, like when you're doing a regular dance and go into it for a second, it's kind of like, what the heck is that? And then you go back. And so it's just a little flavoring. Uh, so yeah, the weird dances are just kind of like, cause I just like weird physical stuff, but uh, it works to t with while dancing too. Now this may seem like a weird question, but what's on your mind when you're dancing is dad. Um, and how does being dad make you feel as a character? Like when you're in the dad mind space, what's going on? Uh, well, I don't know what I'm thinking about when I'm dancing. It depends on like what's happening at the moment in time. Well, probably just a lot of stuff. If I'm doing a live stream, I'm thinking about, okay, once this song ends, I got to get back to the computer and pause it so the next song doesn't start playing. Or I'm thinking if I'm doing it in here, I'm hoping I'm not stomping too loud and I will, I'll try to physically not stomp too heavy to make the neighbors annoyed downstairs. I always wonder if they hear me. Uh, I'm just thinking about random things or like what I was working on earlier, what I have to do the next day, just kind of mind wandering type stuff. Uh, that especially happened during when I danced for 10, 10 hours nonstop on the dad channel for New Year's Eve last year, you know, and I was like texting people on my watch as I was doing it. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I don't really think about the dancing. I don't think it's just kind of like going, you know, but that's just when I'm filming or I'm on stream, I guess. When I'm dancing myself, which I'm just very happy, a lot of times when I go to these clubs, I often close my eyes because I'm just enjoying the uh, the act of moving to music. And a lot of times, you'll I'll kind of get like taken out of the fun of it when I when I start analyzing what's going on around me, where I see like these people talking, I'm like, oh, girl's got a drink, is she gonna spill it? And then I see guys like going up to girls, which always bothers me. Guys are always like right behind girls. And I see the girl like moving away and I'm like focusing on this. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's creeped it over here. Sometimes I would slide between people. One time one girl said, thank you one night when I did oh, wow. that. One guy was like all over this girl. And then I just like slid in and started dancing right between them. But I was facing him to not be like a guy who was like, oh, I'm sliding in and I'm gonna hit on this girl. I slid in and I went face to face with this guy to sort of stop him. And I was like, hey, what's up? And he's like, well, what's up, bro? And he got super mad. He started pushing me and I just kept dancing. And I do this thing that makes people very uncomfortable. If someone ever gets in a confrontation with me somewhere, I'll start giggling and it makes them feel so weird. I did to a homeless man who was like almost assaulting me one time. I just start going, <laughs> cause they're like, what are you, who are you weird? And I don't like this. <laughs> and the other time I was at a Starbucks, this, this homeless guy was sitting next to me and started screaming at me, like right in my face. And he goes, yo, can't look at me. And I just like going, mm -hmm. and he goes, what? And I go, mm -hmm. and like the guy was crazy. I felt bad. I didn't, I wasn't going to say to this guy, there's nothing I go, I can't, you know, debate in the kind of conversation with a crazy homeless man. I felt bad for him, but I wanted him to stop yelling at me. So I started giggling and it made him so uncomfortable. And he went over to the Starbucks and play. He goes, this man's giggling at me. And she goes, sir, you please need to be quiet. And then eventually they kicked him out. So I averted the whole situation. I did it in the club with that guy. Uh, but back to the dancing thing, uh, I will often close my eyes. Uh, I like to dance with my eyes closed a lot of times. So then I'm just like, it sounds kind of cheesy, but I'm like, I'm just feeling it. So it's not really like a uh, like a dad mood you go into. It's just kind of no, filling it. No, because I danced before you there was even dad. I dance as every character. It's really just Nathan with a different hairstyle or mustache or clothes, the wardrobe on doing the exact same thing I always do. <laughs> but now it's a different person doing it. Right. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, dad's moves. Uh, I, I, there is a slight difference, I guess, between like Keith and dad. I try not to do the exact same moves, even though I mostly do, but I try to have at least a different attitude and energy when dad's dancing. It's a little more like he's just dancing like this, you know, and Keith's more like all out sweating and going hard. Um, but mm, for, as far as mindset for being in the character of dad, I don't know. I often just kind of think like just take away more take i try to take out personality a little bit to be the character because he's technically like I, said, I i really throw it out the window when i do the live streams because it's just so tiring for 12 hours i'm playing a game to always be like this hi how's it going but like really i just have to like talk sort of monotone and slightly robotic if it's too robotic it sounds a little cheesy but uh yeah i try to just have no personality and that's dad and 
it's actually a more tiring character to keep up with. Keith Albuquerque and like my other characters, Ray Amsley, are more like me because they're loud and over the top and they're yelling and they say weird things. And uh, that's easier for me and more fun for me. And it, honestly, I will say that playing the dad tech character is a bit taxing and it's the least I enjoy. And I know it's like the most popular character, but there's something about talk talking like this that irks me personally a little bit going, hi, how are you? It, that voice bothers me. And I don't know why I'm like, I chose it. I decided to do it. I remember having a conversation. I remember talking to my uh, friend Siobhan who, about the character. And I asked her, I was like, do you think I should talk like this light? Or the other option was deeper because when I was making the songs, I was the first song is I was often singing in a lower tone, lower register, like Tom Waits kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was singing like this, like dad, dad is feeling good kind of thing. Um, and I was like, maybe I should do like more of a, like a masculine cliche, masculine manly voice. Like, hello, I'm dad. Cause that's an easy voice for me to like do. I don't have to like try as hard than talking up high like this. Um, and she liked the deeper one. She they said thought the deeper one was more interesting and it had like a richer sound to it. And it does work better for the songs. And a lot of people who will help me with auto tuning and mixing will say your voice is, is easier for it's easier for me to sing in a lower register because I have a I was a bass and chorus in high school. So that uh, is I, all that being said, I think is why I don't love doing the voice. It kind of just irks me. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know why, I don't know how else to explain it. But yeah, there are times where I'm like, yeah, I kind of like overdoing this dad character because I, but I think it's also because I do him more than I've ever even done any of other characters because I'm live streaming as him all the time. I'm putting out so many videos, so many songs. It's been like three years of like 10 years of work. So that's how I feel about performing as dad. <laughs> It's probably disappointing to people and sad to hear because people really <laughs> love that character so much. Oh, it's a really fun character, but I definitely get the uh, the stress from just having to take yourself out of the character. Essentially. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, exactly. It's the least me of all the characters. And I wonder if that's why there's some hesitance. There's a lot of Nathan subscribers. They still say it to this day. They go, yeah, I can't get into the dad thing. I tried watching it. Don't like it. I just want to see Keith. I think because they want to see stuff. Maybe maybe there's like some subconscious thing where like they can tell the other characters are more me and my personality where dad is like an actual I'm acting and I'm right. being myself. Although there is me in the dad character where he'll say some really stupid jokes or be silly and it does or does something physical and the dancing. His taste in music is right in line with me, but it is not like Nathan at all. So, well, speaking of dad, uh, what was your favorite moment when making dad? It could be something you were filming, something during editing, just maybe even an episode. What was your favorite part of dad in general? This, I'll say uh, there's two things that are kind of equal. Uh, making the music, I really like, as they always say like actors and comedians are just uh, failed musicians or people who, <laughs> comedians, they often say comedians are just wa want to be musicians and vice versa, musicians always want to be comedians. Uh, that's the same true about wrestlers too. A lot of times comedians want to be wrestlers and wrestlers want to be comedians. Really? This is a whole conversation I have, I've had with wrestlers and other comedians. Um, but I do love making the music. I used to be in a band with my brother, Seth. Uh, I love making songs. I don't make music myself other than the story, like the videos, the, the score, I do the keyboard for the episodes, but the music for the music videos, I find music from artists that I like that allow me to use it. And then I just sort of edit the songs a little bit to make them, to format them so they'll flow with what I'm writing. And then, so I just sort of chopping things here and there. And then uh, I'll write lyrics and throw them over it. And it's really fun because like I love performing live. So in like the Keith Apicary songs, for example, I love being able to sing and perform live over this backing track. So that's what I'm looking forward to doing as dad. I've done it twice now and it was it's so much fun. So making the music I love and like coming up with the songs and actually recording the act of like when I'm sitting here recording the vocals and dropping it in and making it the right, putting the right spot formatting and creating the song i love it so much more than even making the episodes and i love making the episodes because like you know that's my my first love is like filmmaking and shooting a visual story and putting it together and the second thing i'll say which is probably equal that i like just as much is uh the, some of the videos i've shot 
the going to the studio is really fun, but it's also incredibly stressful. So I wouldn't say this is the main series shooting because I'm doing so much and I have so much responsibility and I'm spending so much money. It's always a nightmare and for me mentally, but like we get through it and it comes out great. But it's like such a task. I dread the, the studio days. I have so much stuff I have to do and I'm physically carrying the whole table myself. It's like 400 pound table. I'm, everything is just, I'm doing everything by myself and it's a nightmare. So that is satisfying, but the most satisfying is when I'll go out and I've done it with my, with Derek. Derek's one of the camera guys. He shot the newest dad music video in the convenience store. He shot so much of the finale. He shot like tons of the studio videos, him and Aaron who shot Milford and Neutral. The two of them shoot the entire dad series. Uh, Derek and I shot the first video, which was dad, dad uploaded where it's me out around LA and those days when we do stuff like that. And when we shot dad feels good, he did all the downtown city stuff. He and I would just run around LA for a day and just make stuff up as we go. And I'm like, Oh, this would work. I need a shot like this. And I have these like shots that I know I need and we'll just go and we'll get, we'll add shots. We make stuff up. Whereas one point we were driving down the highway, uh, going towards downtown. And I was like, just pull over in the breakdown lane right now. And we pulled over on the left side of the road. I got out of the car and he got out and just started filming me. I was like, I'm just going to walk at you because we had this, saw this perfect shot of the city behind us. And I was like, I really want to have downtown LA seascape. So I'm just walking down the freeway as he's filming and I'm just walking like this. And those moments are so fun for me. And then like, we'll go and find a building I can climb on. And he starts, does this slow zoom where I'm like standing on a building, looking down at him. And we're just running around, messing around and like getting cool shots. And those are my favorite times. Cause it's just two friends filming nonsense, having fun. And then you turn it into something and people watch it and put some music over it. Perfect. So those, the, the sort of the guerrilla film filmmaking, that's how I shoot all my dance videos too. It's me and a tripod just running around LA for a day or two, sometimes a month, depending on the video. Uh, like the Skrillex video that just came out, that is just me and a friend, but 99% of the time is me and my tripod. And I have it right here. It's got duct tape all over it. I've had this tripod for 12 years. And it's a really lightweight, cheap tripod that I just take so I can like take really quickly, take it into a store, shoot and run out of the store and not have them like arrest me or kill me, yell at me. Do you have a favorite episode of Dead Feels? I really like the episodes with Boss because he's so funny to me. He was a guy I found on Craigslist, an actor, just I put out an ad on Craigslist and he's up, he's amazing. I loved him. Um, maybe the finale of Act 3 was very satisfying for me because it was an hour and 15 minute Technically, it's a film, I guess, but even though it's edited and formatted in a way where it's not, it's not like a fluid film, you know what I mean? But it is, if you know the story, I guess. Uh, when they're, they're going to get Nathan because they left him in the basin, uh, basically to die, to hide him, so he wouldn't bought, ruin their plan. Uh, then she goes to pick him up because Crothers says, you gotta pick him, take him back, bring him back. And I only did, I won't get into the details, but, that was fun for me because I shot the whole thing by myself with a tripod. And I just, I did have a behind the scenes on my Nathan, on this, on, on the, my Nathan YouTube channel, um, where I show how I do it. And I just put, I let the van drive by itself. I set the tripod up in the van. I lay down in the back of the van with a door wide open so we can get a shot of like the desert sand, the lake bed moving behind me and no one's driving the van. That was, that was really fun. Cause I just went out there again and just made it up as I went and just, figured stuff out and the music Duzzled, who made the music for everything is fine made that song he's like hey i was messing around with a song i don't know if it's something you'd want to use and i was like oh this is actually perfect for an upcoming episode so i love that music i love the voiceover i have this thing with vo audio from a voicemail has this really nice sound to me like when you hear someone's voice and it sounds like it has that like it kind of has that like ruffled um hot there's a word there's a filter you can put on it's called high pass high pass filter uh i love that sound so i had i, I had uh erica who plays cheryl do that again in one of the new dad songs uh, in loops because i just love hearing voice messages i don't know why i could listen to a voice message from a stranger all day <laughs> it's a weird thing uh, i really love that song that you're right there's something about that style of sound that's just super melancholy and yet peaceful yeah. just it like yeah. hits your soul a certain it just way. Sounds nice. And when you hear that and then a message, yeah. 
it either reminds you of the days where there was answering machines, which mm -hmm. is maybe nostalgic in a way, but also just the sound of a voicemail. It has a cool sound to it. Uh, speaking of your films and filming and everything, now I'd like to uh, get a little bit of insight into your films. What was your favorite film project uh, to work on or the concept itself and how it came to fruition? Mine is definitely neutral by far. Something about it just really spoke to me. Thank you. Thank you. I was going to say the same exact thing. Neutral, really? <laughs> for sure. Yeah, yeah. That's my favorite thing I've ever made because it's the closest project or something I've made that's it's the closest to what I have wanted to make. It's still not perfect. I was still limited in many ways because, you know, we, I only raised $30,000. I say only, it's a lot of money, I know, but if, when it comes to making a film, it's nothing, it's pennies. Uh, and then I spent 20,000 on my own after selling all my junk. So we had $50,000 total and I still couldn't, I couldn't do like the slow motion stuff. There was supposed to be many more locations. It was supposed to cut through a lot more locations of him like getting blown away. He's sad. I was gonna, at the end, it was gonna show three spots. He's at the he's in the bedroom. He's at, he's at the apartment, the bedroom, and then the bar. And then it was supposed to go through boom, 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 even more like boom, 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 a laundry room, a park. There's supposed to be one on a park bench where we're both sitting, and it was behind the head the heads of us. And I was gonna get blown up off the bench. There was all these in the original script. There was all these other things like that's like one example of like what I couldn't do because we didn't have the money and it cost so much money just to even get that studio. The studio was where we shot the bar, the bedroom and the door when she originally closes the door, when initially closes the door and I go blowing away. It was all in one studio and we just kept turning to these different angles. We set up these areas to look like certain scenes. Um, and it was so expensive that took like so much of the money. And then it, it, to get the phantom camera for the intro of the movie, were so rushed because the camera guy had to leave for a flight later and we had to drive out in the middle of the desert. That camera was a um, $5,000 rental just for the day. And it's just like, here, the money's just going so fast. And I didn't get to do the fall the way I wanted because I was rushing myself. So that being said, it's the closest to something where I, I want to make a project someday where, and people say, I'll never say this, but I know I, 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 I am okay. I will go, no, this is good enough. I don't need everything to be perfect. I will give at times and go, yeah, it's good enough, but neutral could have been a little bit better, but it's the closest because all my projects, all the videos I make are not, I'm not proud of like any video, honestly, because it's just like, it's just a video I'm doing in my spare time just for fun. I'm just throwing stuff on the internet and it's as good as I can do with my tripod in my crappy camera. It's not what I want to make. What I feel that I am able to make is on par with what is in movie theaters. And I know I can make a legitimate film and I have good ideas and scripts and I can, I know I can act enough. And I don't even want to direct anything necessarily. I just want to like be in it or write it and be in it or write some of it. So yeah, uh, neutral is the closest to something I've made that I like really love. And that uh, and the music I love, Chaudhry's music is amazing. That will be the first feature film I think that I finish. Just speaking with that moment from Neutral, the, where he just, everything hits him, he's blown back. When you put that into Dad Feels, <laughs> I don't know if you saw the live stream I did of it, but I'm just having a fanboy moment. It's like, oh, that's oh, yeah, that yeah, super yeah. neutral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I tried to do little like nods to stuff that I've done in, in my other stuff. Uh, it also made sense. I was like, well, there has to be sort of a big moment. And it was Phoebe as well. I was like, this is going to be kind of a neutral nod to neutral because it was Phoebe who was talk communicating with him. And so it was the two same actors. It was Nathan and Phoebe, the girl who's in neutral. Um, uh, even though it should have been Katie, technically. Well, he was trying to reach kids because Katie is the girl who in neutral leaves. Katie Malia is her name. Uh, she leaves, which sends me flying out the flying in slow motion. It's like a joyous throwback yeah. this time. And when in neutral, it was a sad punch to the right. gut. Yeah, that was the beauty yeah. of it. It was the same thing, but inverse. So I, I definitely yeah, yeah, got yeah. that. Yeah, so you can get blown away by all kinds of feelings. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I have some ideas for this. I have the, and the script for act two of neutral. There's some really cool slow motion, but used in different ways for different reasons, different emotions. And then I have other ways to show, to emphasize. Like that was a way to show physically show a feeling like how it would feel 
to have someone like leave you like that. Um, I have these other things, visual ways I think I can show other emotions in the next part of neutral, which I think are, I've never seen anyone do before. I was like, oh, this would be kind of cool. Uh, I think the next question was kind of answered. So I might ask it a different way. I was going to ask what your favorite artistic medium is like music or film. Uh, so I guess since you kind of already answered that with being music and making music videos, that kind of thing, what would be your favorite form of media or artistic medium to absorb or consume? Hmm. Well, my favorite for me to create is still my favorite form of artistic creation, I guess, or medium is definitely filmmaking, a visual filmmaking, okay. but like, it's very satisfying to put visuals and to music. I do that a lot. So maybe it's not making the music really. It's just taking songs. I love that's something I just love to do. And like the dance videos are a good example. I just do those for fun. I can't make money off them because they're never my songs. I can't claim them. I just like to make them. I have ideas in my head. I'm like, I have to go make this. I have an idea for a music video. I got to shoot it and I can't not do it. So I think putting vi nice visuals to music is very satisfying for me. I'd like to make an hour and a half like long music video, honestly, just like a film that's just me doing stuff or a character. Then it's all music. And it's like, maybe it's like what well, someone's whole album or something. Musical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or like something like that, or where it's like Shadru or someone who makes like a good music that doesn't have vocals. Kind of like Electro uh, Electroma is a movie Daft Punk made where it's just music and then their visuals. So there is some dialogue and stuff, but it's a lot of it is just them driving for like four minutes as a song plays. And it's like visually pleasing. Uh, something like that is something I'd like to make, but I'd say making a film is way more satisfying, like acting, because acting is my thing that I love the most, just being able to perform. If I could only choose one thing to do in all, and they're like, you can only have one thing, you can't edit, you can't write, you can't dance, you can't whatever, you can not You can only do one, what would it be? I would choose acting to just show up on a set and perform, and I have nothing, no other part in it. That is what I choose, because that's my favorite part, it's just being in character. It's it's odd combination because I really feel you in it, but also whatever character you're playing, you're them. Absolutely. It's almost like you flip yeah, a switch, yeah, yeah. you go away, but some accents from your person is grafted onto them. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's, it's hard because you see that in every, act, every actor. Like a lot of actors are literally just themselves every time they do anything. Like they just are them, you know, they don't really change personality very much. Like Johnny Tom Depp. Hardy, <laughs> yeah, Johnny Depp, yeah, he's kind of always himself and like, it's not a knock on some people. Some people just just the type of actor they are. That's like they are good with dialogue and being a so on a quote unquote character because the things they're saying aren't what they would say, but their voice is the same, their mannerisms are the same, their tone is the same. They like if they're in an interview as themselves or the character, it's hard to tell the difference. Anyways, so other people who really get into character are satisfying to see because it doesn't seem like them. I don't want to compare myself to that person because of Daniel Day-Lewis because I'm not that good, but I do think I could possibly get there if I did more stuff because I really do like becoming a different person. Like I feel like Keith Apicary sounds and looks nothing like well, the bald head is what's hard to get away from, but dad and Keith, and then like Ray Amsley, people often wouldn't know I was the same person if I went from my Ray Amsley character to Keith Abacary, you know? So I do like changing. And if I can convince people in real life that I'm really like this, and I feel that's the best way of, like Sasha Baron Cohen is an amazing actor because people in real life believe him. And so I want to go out there into the world as Keith Abacary and people are believing I'm really like that. I think that's a good job. <laughs> so I think that's doing prank type stuff sort of like helps you become a better actor because you're living in the character like for a while. I've talked yeah, to people I, like, oh, yeah, he's yeah. a character? What? Yeah, <laughs> to this day, I get comments all the time. I go, dude, I didn't know you were a real person. I thought your, your name was just Keith. So yeah, I, I, that's more of a compliment. I'd rather them know that Keith than even me. They don't need to know who I am. I just yeah. want them to be as lost in the performance and like believe it because that's so much more satisfying. Actually, I actually have a few questions about Keith now. Um, if Keith was featured in his own modern video game, so like, you know, like a PS5 modern game, and you had creative control of that game, what would the game be like? Genre, art style, etc. Ooh, hmm, trying to think. Uh, it'd probably be like if it's Keith making it or controlling sort of like how, mm -hmm. what game he's going to be in or choosing, it'd probably be some sort of a brawler. Like an, if it's, I guess it would just be like a 3D brawling beat em up game. Cause I was gonna say Streets of Rage originally, cause that's like his kind of game, but that's 16 bit side scrolling. So if it's a modern PS5 game, 
the only thing I really could reference right now is what I'm playing, which is called, which is Ratchet and Clank, the, the newest version on PlayStation 5. Amazing graphics, by the way. Truly, truly beautiful. It's psychotically good looking, this game. Uh, and it's very fun. You just smash a lot of stuff. You shoot people with lasers. It'd probably be a game like that because Keith would want like a very like classic cliche game. It's like, oh, I'm going to fight ninjas. I'm going to fight aliens, monsters, zombies, uh, mother-in-laws, and you name it. He'll just fight <laughs> anyone and everyone. And he'll shoot lasers, Chinese stars, nunchucks, his fists, glass bottles. It'd be like a super over-the-top tanks. Whoa. It would be just a major brawler beat him up, kind of like Metal Slug, but 3D, uh, okay. where you just get all kinds of weapons and you just destroy everything. <laughs> That's what Keith would be. That would be what he would make. So it would be Metal Slug meets One Punch Man, but it's Keith. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And it would look like, you know, he'd, he'd want graphics that look like Death Stranding or something that looked oh, yeah. real. <laughs> Well, uh, here's another question that kind of goes into everything. If you had an unlimited budget and resources, what project would you revive or start? There's a movie I want to do uh, called, <laughs> I don't think I've ever really told anyone about this, a Montana Senior Junior, and his last name is, Mon is Senior, is, or Senior. Montana is his name, Montana Senior, and he's the son, so it's, he's Junior. He's the junior because his dad is Montana senior. So he's Montana senior junior. Uh, and it's a spoof sort of, or to play on Indiana Jones and Inspector Clouseau. So like Pink Panther. So it's basically, I shouldn't say that. It's like, a, if it's like, if you took Indiana Jones and Tintin or something, and you put it together with Inspector Clouseau, the Pink Panther movies, a completely clumsy moron, that's what it is. It's a clumsy, dumb, adventurer indiana jones it takes place in the 30s or 40s and he's trying to go find this treasure and there's this girl who's like a better treasure hunter and he's trying to race her they're sort of rivals but he doesn't he accidentally stumbles his way through things it's kind of a silly cliche comedy but like i the idea i have i love i won't go too much into it but that is what i would do with unlimited budget because it's like i the stunts and the physical comedy i could do in that would be so much fun It'd basically be my, it'd be like Keith or Simmons DuPont going on a treasure hunt. I might pitch that. I was actually talking to someone the other day about oh, the United like Network it. that I know about pitching it as a TV show, but don't, don't wait, don't hold your okay. breath. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so not to be morbid here, but um, how would you like for people to remember you when you're gone? That's kind of a question most people mm. don't ask, but I'm really curious what, what image or what thought do you want to leave on the world? I guess I just want people to say oh that guy was funny <laughs> or that guy like i don't know he was doing something original i guess that's i do i'm a little bit of a snob for originality and i like if i start making something i realize someone's already kind of done it i'll stop it or i'll change it so that it's a little bit original which I, you shouldn't necessarily do you should just kind of make the ideas you make because it's hard to be very original i do a little bit get hung up on that i like to do things that no one else is doing or at least have my own energy and style to what I do. Cause like, yeah, everyone wants to act. Everyone makes things, everyone films things. That's like kind of not, that's not original, but what I'm putting out at least, hopefully it's sort of original. My friend Paul told me just the other day, it happened again. Uh, these breakdowns will go out to directors for jobs, for commercials and for um, uh, mostly commercials, uh, where they'll be like, we're, we, this is the idea, the concept, the creative advertising agency came up with for the commercial. We want it to be this, the guy is going to the store and he's trying to buy a refrigerator. And they always write, think like Fred Armisen, think Will, Will Ferrell. I get referenced a ton. They say a Nathan Barnett type. And I'm not even a big name or a celebrity or anything like that, so it always blows my mind that I'm in there. And it happened to my friend Josh Fadum one time too, and I told him, I went to a commercial audition that said Josh Fadum type. And I was like, why don't you just get Josh? He would be here auditioning with me. He's just another guy like me. He's like, no one really knows. He's in the little bit parts here and there. And I told him, I was like, Josh, they were using you as a reference. And he goes, that's so annoying when they do that. I've been told it happens to me too. I get used as a reference. And then my friend Paul said to the guy, he goes, why don't you just get Nathan? He's available. And I think people assume that maybe I'm not, but the fact that they're asking for a Nathan Barnett type 
tells me at least I'm getting the fact I'm annoyed, first of all, that they're not just asking me because I need the job and I will be in it. So yes, please ask me. But the fact that I am being referenced as a type means I'm doing something that is making me stand out as sort of a, a type a thing. Looking at my channel, when I was doing a variety of things and just whatever I wanted to do, I wasn't growing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. now that I'm doing one genre of content, yeah, it's growing. And that, I hate that's, that. I hate they take originality out of it in a way. Yeah, people don't want to sift through your things. I think mm -hmm. that's the, what it comes down to. They don't want to dig for the stuff they want to see. They eventually go, mm, yeah, I don't care about looking anymore. I can't find the thing I want. I can't find the character I want. Not even going to bother looking. There's all this other stuff I don't care about. And my audience definitely is like that. I get so many comments saying, do more dance videos. Do do more Keith Abacary. Do more Trevor. They want what they want but i have to be like i do i like lots of things and i so i understand like yeah i wish i only wanted to do one thing i truly genuinely wish because then i would be doing well i'd be happy in doing that i often say i just wish i was a painter because then i could just paint and it'd be cheap and easy and if people bought my paintings i would only do that it would be super easy but like the fact that i want to make all these different things it sort of hurts me in the end and it get, brings no views but i can't stop it because like that's this is what my brain wants i'll lose my mind if i do just one thing like that's why i stopped doing talking classics because it was not fun to do it was just the same thing over and over i don't think it's in me i don't think i have the personality for it to do just one thing and i really wish i did because i see all these other people doing so well at doing one thing and i envy that because then they're able to keep making stuff it's really hard for me to keep making stuff when there's no views coming in and I can't fund making more stuff. And I spend a lot of money on my stuff and I put a lot of effort into the production of what I make. And it just, if it was just simple little videos, then there would be no budget. It'd be easy to right. do that. But I, unfortunately, I, I wish I did. So I did start doing grave stories on the dad's channel to see if it would do well. And if it did well, I would just keep doing that. And that'd be the money maker to then go and experiment and do all the other weird stuff but it didn't quite hit, didn't quite work. Cause the dad audience was like, we don't get this. And, <laughs> yeah. and I, and I, but if I put anything on the Nathan channel, it just dies and no one watches it, it gets 4,000 views and it goes away. So I was like, it's worth me tying it into the dad story to put it on the dad channel because it'll at least get more views, which will bring a couple more dollars to then make everything else. Honestly, the only thing I could think of with the, the grave stories working well because of the way YouTube is set up <laughs> mm -hmm. is, um, you know, having grave stories as its own channel. And I hate that. I hate that you have to put I know, every series. I know. As its own and I thought that I was going to do it as its own channel, but I have so many channels I already. Know, you do. <laughs> I was like, it's people are going to get annoyed. Like another channel. I, I think at some point I have to delete all the channels except for dad and Nathan and just be like, there's no other channels. Everyone don't watch Keith's. I, I don't, I don't want to do because people are getting like overwhelmed. The core audience who tries to watch everything is like, I am subscribed to like a hundred of this guy's channels. There's the streaming channels. There's dad streaming channel. There's uh, the dub boys. There's Keith Apicary, Beyond Worlds, there's Nathan kind of collaboration, there's Beyond Worlds collaboration channel. Then I have Twitch for yeah. dad and Nathan. It's like, I'm only <laughs> one person. There should be one channel and one streaming <laughs> channel. That's it. But there was one channel and it stopped, it stopped working. So I had to start doing other channels to see it. Dad was an experiment and then that sort of took off and now it's sort of dead, just like Nathan. So I was like, maybe I need to start another project. I don't think dad's dead. Honestly, I think what it is, is that um, act four was so different than the first three mm. that they, they didn't think it continued. They thought it was like filler. In between. Yeah, which was confusing to me because I, I do get frustrated and I don't ever mean to be rude, but like the audience is not paying attention. A lot of the people like that. There's a core audience that likes and watches and knows what's going on. Like you and other people are very well aware of what's going on. It said the words on the screen to be continued and no one read those words because they're just, <laughs> I think, watching on their phone while doing something else. It's mm -hmm. an hour, 15 minutes. They probably tuned out. They skipped to the end. They didn't even see the words to be continued. And they're like, OK, it's over. Or they see the upload. They don't even click it. They see the upload. They see Act 3 finale and they mm -hmm. don't even watch it. They go, oh, I guess it must have ended. And then they don't even watch it. So that's probably why they thought it's over. But if they watched the actual videos and oh, paid attention, <laughs> they would know it's not over. Act, and then Act 4 started one month later, not even. It was like shortly after. It was three and weeks. people were like, Act 4, what? And then they go, I don't care. I think it's laziness and lack of interest. So, and it's fine if they're not interested, they're not interested, nothing I can do about that. Well, I but, think they're still interested. I think if you bring it back when, when you're finished with this, 
you know, you get the big finale for Act Four, and then you advertise season two of Dad. They're like, oh, because they already think it ended, so they're not really yeah. thinking of Act Four. But if it's a whole new season, I think so they'll I be think- right back in it. I feel some people will will watch. If, if I did a season two premiere, if the people will go, oh, the story's back on, and it would get a little bit more views than it has been getting. I'd maybe get like twenty or thirty thousand views instead of the one hundred thousand I used to get. I don't think it would be enough because I think that it's the channel has been so sort of not that no one's getting notifications. I, I am a psych, psychopath when re, with reading comments and everyone is saying, I don't get notifications. I have the bell clicked. I don't know what's happening. So I know the ones who are actively trying to find out are coming to tell me that, but then the ones who aren't getting a notification aren't aware of it to then come and tell me they're not. So they just think the channel's gone and I get comments all the time. They're going, oh, I didn't know you were still uploading. I have like 10 videos I haven't seen. So that's a huge part of it. So I have to go make a new project and hope that then I get another three good years out of the algorithm and then it'll die off and I'll do another thing. Mm. Or the ultimate plan, this is what I've been talking to my friends about and this is what I'm thinking of doing anyways because it's just a matter of time and I should be should have done a long time ago is I just need to stop all this nonsense and don't even bother with you and YouTube stuff. Just do it in my spare time for free when I can for fun or whatever, when I have some free time, it's like, oh, I have a video, here's something. And here's an idea I had, I'd throw it up. Do a dad song here and there, do some streams, because streaming is easy. And that, you know, get make donations helps me live. So stop it all, stop the grind of YouTube and just go make a movie and just do what I'm supposed to be doing. And I know I'm supposed to be doing and I'm talking about it all the time. Why am I not doing it? You just got to do it. And that's what I think the plan is now is I'm, planning i'm trying to go make the next act of neutral and then the next year i'll do act three and then i'll have a a final film on my hands and hopefully from there it'll get some attention and someone will go oh this is good here's and i'll get real money from an investor not from doing live streams and kickstarters but i'll get money to then go make my first big movie which would hopefully be las vegas well, uh, that's all for the questions, but I do, uh, if you have time and you fill up to it, I do have a request from my mom, actually. Oh, yeah, totally. She absolutely loves to watch you dance. So she was wanting to know uh, if you dance to a dad bop as part of this. <laughs> yeah, totally. Talking. She kept texting me, so. Debbie, this is for you. She to me, well, she's just a common friend, trust in me, this is what you must believe. There's nothing to worry about. I'm sorry, now that's it, I really need it, oh my god, you are like real life mad, please listen to me what I have to say. There you go. Frank was so confused. I think I Frank <laughs> at one point too. I had a blast talking to you today. Thank you so much again for the this opportunity and this interview. I really appreciate well, it. You my said, pleasure. Thank you for wanting to do it. Thanks for asking me everything. Well, I absolutely look forward to everything you have coming soon. Uh, the Likewise. movies, the films, everything. So thank you, thank you. I look forward to seeing this. You always do a great video, so thank you. I appreciate you. Again. I appreciate that. I really do. Uh, anything else you want to say before we go, or anything? Or I guess. Everybody watch the Dad Act 4 finale when it comes out. Do we have an uh, estimation on that? <laughs> I don't. I'm waiting on FX, and okay. uh, it's kind of hard to ever say when because it's it always gets delayed. I'm hoping it's probably going to be shortly into the new year. I want it to be before the end of the year, but maybe around Christmas if I get lucky. So okay. hopefully Christmas or the new year. Hey, thank you all for watching. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my patrons. Thank you all so much for everything you do to support what I do. Vexus, CNK114, Investigator Zeus, Dobby's Music, Jerry Mullins, and Phantasm7. Thank you all again for keeping this channel and my other projects going.